In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to hit a drop shot. The forehand and backhand drop shot is in the same family of shots as your forehand and backhand chip return, as your forehand and backhand volley, and also your forehand and backhand slice. So if you're good at any of those shots, for example, if you have a good backhand slice, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't have a good backhand drop shot. So to be able to utilize a drop shot in match situations, you must learn the fundamentals of a drop shot. And let's start off with the drop shot grip. It's gonna be the same as your chip return, your slice, and your volley. It's gonna be a continental grip with your base knuckle at bevel number two. And there's going to be a slight take back on the drop shot. This will depend on the pace of the incoming ball, but generally speaking, you want your racket head above your grip and you want the tip of the racket to be slightly behind your shoulder. This is for the forehand drop shot and the backhand drop shot. The swing path on the drop shot is crucial and it must be performed high to low. So the tip of your racket is going to be above your shoulder and you're going to make contact somewhere between your chest and your hip area and then once you make contact with the ball you are going to continue to go down with the tip of the racket like this so the swing path has to be high to low this is the case for the forehand and backhand it has to be high to low and the racket has to continue to go down after contact is made Now, to be able to create backspin on the ball, meaning that once the ball lands on the other side, it's actually either gonna stop in place, or if you hit it really well, it's actually gonna start going backwards towards the net. And the way you do this is by making contact uh, with a slightly open racket face. So if you combine these two factors, if you go high to low, you continue going down after contact, and you make contact with an open racket face, you should be able to get backspin on the ball. A few things to keep in mind when hitting drop shots is that you must make a soft contact with the ball. In other words, you don't want to hit the ball uh, too hard. You must gently absorb the ball in your strings uh, when you make contact. And that's what's referred to in tennis as touch. And touch is not something that you can learn in a couple of days. It does take a while to master. A great way to improve your touch is to play a lot of mini tennis and also mini tennis games. I have another video. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description below you can see some great uh, mini tennis games that you can play which can definitely improve your touch another important thing on the drop shot is that you hold your body still so once you go down after contact you must kind of hold this position even keep your head kind of down you can see Nadal uh, doing this as he hits drop shot he kind of holds his body position and uh, this will give you more control in this crucial period because there's not a lot of room for error on drop shot so you must hold your body still to give the racket head more control as it goes down after contact. Another thing that's important to remember is that you do need pace of the incoming ball in order to execute a proper drop shot. So if you feed a ball to yourself, it's very difficult to hit a proper drop shot because we don't have no pace to work with and we have to hit through the ball a little bit more in order to generate underspin. You don't have this problem when you have pace of the in incoming ball and the faster the ball comes to you, the less you have to do. So you literally do not have to hit forward at all on drop shot. You just basically go high to low and then when you make contact, the racket goes straight down and it doesn't go forward very much. So basically what you're doing is you're using the pace of the incoming ball, you're deflecting the ball back, and the way you are doing this, you are creating backspin. So you'll find a lot of times the more pace the incoming ball has, if you execute the drop shot correctly, you will get tremendous amounts of backspin. In some cases, you can even get the ball to bounce on the other side and then come back to your side. Another great way to more effectively use drop shots in matches is to do what's called the fake drop shot. And you see this a lot on the forehand side from professional players. So you go into your regular forehand grip and you do your regular forehand loop 
that you wouldn't do on a normal forehand. And now, once you hit this spot, you're going to change your grip. Now, you're going to have to do the grip change with one hand, which is uh, a little bit unorthodox. Normally, you change the grip with your non-dominant hand. So on the fake drop shot, you're going to have to change the grip just with one hand. And you do it right here, and then you make a drop shot. So the other person is not expecting the drop shot. It can come as a surprise and is therefore a lot more effective. The fake drop shot works on the backhand side as well. If you have a two-handed backhand, you simply take the racket up like you normally do, and as you're going forward towards the ball, uh, you go into the drop shot technique. On the one-handed backhand, you do need a grip change. So if you have an eastern backhand grip, you would take the racket back and like you always do uh, with a loop. And then as you come forward, you would have to change your grip and then do a drop shot. Now the placement of your drop shots is very important. And the safest way to do it is just to hit a straight drop shot. What I mean by that is no matter what position of the court you're in, you just hit the ball straight forward and try to drop shot it that way. And that is the easiest way uh, to get control over a ball. However, it is also the easiest way uh, for your opponent to get to if you indeed leave the drop shot a little bit too high. A better way to do it would be a cross court drop shot like this. Or even better, you do an inside out drop shot uh, like that. The cross court drop shots are a little bit more low percentage because you are hitting the ball closer to the line. However, if you execute them correctly, they are definitely more difficult to get for the opponent because the ball is moving off the court. And the most difficult drop shot to master and the most effective is the inside out drop shot. So the way uh, you do this shot is you make contact with the tip of the racket position slightly backwards. So if you imagine me hitting in this direction, I would make contact uh, with the tip of the racket pointing slightly back. And now what happens if I make this type of contact is that the ball will curve uh, to the left after it bounces. This is what's called side spin. So if you hit a drop shot correctly this way, uh, there's a very high chance that you're going to hit a drop shot winner of this type of shot. And here are the mistakes that I see at the recreational level when it comes to hitting drop shots. Number one, you have to realize that the drop shot is an offensive shot and not a defensive shot. In other words, you should never hit a drop shot when you're behind the baseline or if you get pushed uh, wide on the run, for example. I see a lot of players start dro drop shotting in defensive situations and it works very seldomly. What you should do instead is drop shot when you're in an offensive position in the court, inside the baseline, when you have the other person on the run, ideally pushed behind the baseline. This is when you can utilize a drop shot. And in this case, the drop shot doesn't even have to be this good. It doesn't have to be that close to the net. And you can still hit a winner of this type of shot. Another very common drop shot mistake at the rec level is players try to drop shot low ball. So you should never take a drop shot that falls below your hip level because what's going to happen if I hit a ball uh, let's say at my knee level here I'm going to have to hit up on the drop shot and that's going to make it sit up on the other side of the court remember the drop shot is hit high to low and the racket needs to continue to go down after contact so if there's a low ball it's very difficult to hit down on a low ball uh, because it's going to be tough for you to make the ball go over the net so naturally on low balls we start hitting up on the ball and that is not a good thing if you're trying to execute a drop shot And finally, it's very important for you to not fall in love with the drop shot. I see at the recreational level, many players overuse the drop shot. So they do it every other shot. Now what happens as a result of that, the opponent starts expecting drop shots and therefore the drop shot becomes less efficient. Make sure to utilize your drop shot in very specific situations in a match and use it seldomly, maybe once every two games. And therefore the opponent is not going to be expecting a drop shot and it's therefore going to be a lot more efficient. So make the drop shot as part of your game. It is a fantastic shot that is so much fun when you execute it properly. If you have any questions, please write a comment in the section below. I'll be happy to respond. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.